Hey guys. Jeff. What's up? So as you, uh, you guys know, there's um, an awareness campaign called Hockey Talks that's been around for many years now. And um, where the hockey community comes together and we talk about uh, mental health. So to destigmatize mental health, to normalize it. Um, so thanks for being here to share some of your stories. Uh, so Mike, we'll start with you. Uh, we were chatting and um, you were telling me uh, that when you played um, in the Miters, uh, sometimes there were some moments that were a little tougher to handle. So uh, could you just share us the example and we'll, uh, we'll get into it a little bit more. Yeah, so I guess like uh, there was times when when I was in the minors, probably especially my second year, where um, I was just getting scratched a lot and I really wasn't playing a lot of minutes. And uh, you start to sit there after maybe a month of, of not playing and, and you're starting, that light at the end of the tunnel starts to kind of get a little darker and um, you're kind of wondering like, what's going on? Where's my career going? And there's just a lot going on in your head. So I think for me, that was like a, just a really difficult time mentally to kind of stay engaged and it was easy to kind of find days where you're just tired and you just didn't really feel like doing anything. So I think for me, just talking to, to my parents a lot and uh, my, my friends back home and, and even on the team to kind of remind me of who I am and, and why I'm here and, and kind of like open that bigger picture again, I think was really important to me, just having that support structure to, to remind me of those things. Like, hey, you're a good player. You're someone that never gives up, like the work's hard. Like I know times are tough right now, but it's not something that you're just gonna quit, you know? So I think for me that helped a lot and helped me kind of find myself and my, my game again. And I think that's a great example where sometimes it's so easy to over-dramatize situations. You know, we, we don't play much over a few games and we think that's representative of the entire season or our career, you know? Like we didn't play much this game, so therefore we're not gonna play much this season. Uh, or sometimes, you know, you fail at something, but it doesn't mean you're a failure, right? Um, could you guys relate to that a little bit? Like, Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh... Yeah, you kind of always build up the problem. Um, like you said, it's, it's it's on your mind and you're definitely thinking about your problems a lot more than let's say your coaches or teammates are. Sometimes you feel like, you know, you're the center of attention when really other people probably aren't thinking of you that much. So like yeah. you said, like, like you're thinking of your failures a lot or your bad plays or your bad shifts, but other people probably haven't thought of them since you did them, you know? So uh, like you said, that over dramatization, it's, it's something that um, yeah, I think as hockey players, we, um, we like to use the bad to get better. And so we focus so much, um, on the bad, but sometimes uh, you can over-focus on it. Right. We're very good at catching yourselves being bad and sometimes not good enough and catching yourselves being good, right? We sometimes over-focus on the negative stuff and forget the good stuff, right? Um, what did you learn from that? You know, now that it's been a few years and, you know, you got me more mature, you have more experience being a pro now. Um, yeah, I think for me, it was just in hockey, like everything's so structured and you kind of like know what's going on. So just that fear of the unknown and like almost losing control of the situation was, was something that would, that's like, I think what was really tough. So for me, just learning that you can't focus on what you can't control. All I could do is show up to the rink every day. And if I check a couple boxes that I set out for myself, like did I work as hard as I could today? Did I do everything I could to get better? And was I a good person today? If I could check those boxes when I went to bed, whatever else happened just was completely out of my control. And that's what I tried not to focus on. So I just focused on checking those three boxes and that helped me to kind of get through every single day. And um, slowly like things got better and obviously I'm here now, so things worked out. But in order to get through that tough time, I think just building a smaller picture that I could focus on helped me a lot. Yeah, and also be grateful of what you have versus what you don't have. And it's so easy to focus on maybe the minutes you're not playing or, um, but to actually become a little bit more aware of what's actually going on and what you do have is very powerful. Um, Jaden, you, you had talked about um, going through injuries mm -hmm. and how that's not always easy. Yeah. Uh, can you t talk to us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so um, my freshman year in, in college, um, you know, I had a head injury coming into the season, missed the first couple of games and, you know, couldn't train during the summer and then um, you know, worked hard, got back, and uh, I think it was right in February, it was uh, bean pot. So we played the first game, made it to the championship, and then we had a game in between, and I had a high ankle sprain there. Um, so it was the first ever bean pot, you know, thing I was most looking forward to, uh, you know, about my first year. And, you know, I, was, I had to miss that in the rest of the season, and it really took a toll on me. Um, just, you know, spending every day, you know, alone, not going to the rink and, you know, developing bad habits and, 
It's a slippery slope to go down, um, for sure. And, you know, like Pez said, you know, you don't see really the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, you think, you know, just everything's not going my way. And, you know, then the bad habits kind of compound and, you know, you get, you find yourself in a really tough spot. Um, so yeah, I mean, that, that was really tough to go through. And what did you learn from that? Like, what are takeaways that allowed you to, uh, you know, manage that maybe a little better and maybe some struggles or challenges that you went through since then yeah. that you were able to learn from that and to go through these new situations a little easier. I learned that, I mean, life goes on. Played three more years at college. Um, you know, now eventually, you know, I'm pursuing my dream, uh, you know, playing in the NHL. And so life goes on. Um, you know, not everything is as as big and as, as serious as you think it is. Um, you know, and then I also just learned, I mean, how to, how to deal with, you know, a problem and and it starts with the habits. Um, you know, you can't just, you know, something bad happens and you just completely shut down and because um, that only makes it worse. I think, you know, you still got to be be active and, you know, be doing the right things. Um, that's something that I've, you know, taken away from it is, you know, just not shutting down, uh, talking to people, um, you know, kind of letting, letting someone know if I, you know, I'm going through something tough. Um, so yeah, those, those have helped me. And then, you know, obviously there's still injuries in sports, you know, I've gotten hurt a couple times since then, but you know, it's all, it's all just staying on the path. Um, and you know, not letting myself slip. Um, cause you know, I, I knew how I felt from that, for that first year. And it's something that you, you try not to go through again. So I think, um, yeah, it's just all my habits and, um, just learning that, you know, it's, there's life after this, um, you know, there's, it's, it's not just, you know, you're, this day that you're in is, you know, your whole life, you know, tomorrow comes and, you know, the future comes. So it's always just, just staying positive, um, controlling what you can control. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, things, things will get better. And would you say that you're tougher mentally now because he went through that? Yeah, for sure. I think, um, I mean, not even just that, but I think certain things that, you know, you know, you go through, you, you always get tougher from them. You always learn from them. And, um, I'm glad that I got out of the place that I was in and, you know, took a lot of valuable lessons from that to not get back in that same spot. Um, so yeah, it's, it's all about just kind of flipping the page, learning what you can and, you know, not taking yourself too seriously. I think it's not easy to go through it, mm -hmm. but when you're out of it, you're glad you went through it. Oh, for sure. Cause you, you know, you come out of it so much, you know, mm -hmm. stronger and with a lot more perspective. Yeah. One of the one of the things, and I don't know if you can relate to this, and I'm curious to have your opinions as well. When you're injured as an athlete, you lose your identity a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, we build our self confidence and our self esteem from being active, mm -hmm. from playing, from practicing, from from being good, from helping the team, uh, from producing. You know, regardless of your position and your role on the team. Um, did you find that? And and curious to know, and John and Mike as well. Like, is that something you went through? Um, and that you've experienced? Yeah, I completely lost my uh, my identity as a as a person. Really, I was you know, like I said, just twenty four seven by myself. Didn't go to the rink or anything. Um, you know, I felt disconnected from the team, from you know my friends, and um, you know I thought you know they were they were doing everything without me, and um, you know I was missing out on all this stuff. And you know, when in reality, if you know, it's all about your mindset. I could have been there, um, you know, with them, just not participating, you know. Um, so it's all about, you know, the hole that you put yourself in, kind of. I think that's one way to look at it is it is hard and, you know, nothing in life is easy. But, you know, if you change your perspective on it and you change your attitude on it, I think that, you know, that drastically changes, um, you know, your environment around you. Right. And when you see someone getting injured in your environment, in your team, do you see it differently? Do you, do you find a way to maybe, you know, ask them how they're doing and, uh, you know, to offer help or... Yeah, I mean, especially just this year, um, seeing all the guys out, like, it's tough because you don't see the injured guys when you're on the road. It feels like you haven't seen them in a month or so. So um, just even, you know, when I got to the rink and seeing Nui, you know, just trying to, hey, how are you doing? You holding in there, you know, almost make it kind of lighter. Uh, you know, like, oh, this, that's that's great. Like, this is, this, is, this is nice type of thing. Like, just make a joke out of it because, you know, everyone knows it sucks. But, um, you know, if you know that, you know, people around you know that it sucks and know that, you know, you're battling through it. I think it, it definitely helps um, in just communication so you feel like you're still a part of it. I think that's the worst part is when you feel like you're, 
you know, so far on the outside and, um, you know, you're kind of missing out on everything is, uh, is where it gets you. So, right. Mike, John, similar experiences. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, uh, I think the hardest part with being injured is just, you're on a completely different schedule. Like your whole life's built around, like doing the same things, being with the guys constantly, like, uh, so when you're not doing that, it's like, well, what am I, like, what do I do? Like, it's it just like everything, you're showing up to the rink, you're on a different schedule than the guys, so you're not seeing the guys. Like, you'll see the guys on maybe social media and stuff. Like, that's a big thing now. Like, you know, they're out at dinners or out having fun doing different things, and uh, you're missing out, so obviously you feel left out. But I think, like Struves was saying, there's times where it's like you could put yourself in a situation where, hey, I could show up to this. Like, even if my legs hurt, like, no one ever has a problem making sacrifices to, like, hey, maybe... Stroops hurts his leg. Like, let's do something that can include Stroops so that we can all do it together. Cause like, obviously he's having a hard time too. So I think sometimes when you get injured, you try to isolate yourself because yeah. you don't want to be a burden on anyone else. When I think you're really not going to be a burden on anyone else, you're just kind of getting in your head. Whereas like the guys are all happy to do stuff that would allow everyone to be involved. So I think sometimes it's just getting out of your shell there and think not having that thought that you're the burden and that um, you can kind of do everything. One reality that I've noticed in my practice is that, you know, a, a physical injury in the most part is, is concrete. You know, it's easy to di diagnose, you know, it's, it's kind of common, it's normal. Uh, but when we talk about mental injuries, sometimes it's abstract. You know, when someone is going through a depression or a severe anxiety, uh, living panic attacks, or, and it's not as easy sometimes to diagnose. I think it's one of the reasons why we're uncomfortable talking about them is it's difficult to explain what it is. And, and I think it just justifies more and more the importance of speaking with professionals, therapists, psychologists, or people like myself, mental performance. So John, you were, you were talking about just being away from family and friends as a pro athlete. It's not always easy. So can you tell us more about that? Yeah, I think a common theme that we've all talked about um, is that throughout struggle, having community, being able to speak with your friends, family, teammates, like that's something that uh, just makes everything lighter and easier um, when you're going you know you have people in your corner going through whatever you might be going through so for a lot of us we move away from home at 16 uh, and then we're away from family in a whole new city and i'm sure a lot of uh, people out there it might be you know moving away for university or for a job and you know they're in a new city alone so we're in a lucky time i guess with technology you can always still keep in contact uh, with your family and i know with our schedule or sometimes you know you're like, ah, I'm too, like, too busy or feel like maybe you're too tough to talk to your parents or your friends or whatever it might be. Um, I, I just think that being able to speak to someone and having someone who's been a part of your life since you were young or who just knows you in a deep, at a deep level, like that's something that's invaluable and that's something that's um, really important to, you know, get through whatever challenges you might be going through. Yeah. You guys live something similar to that? Yeah, I mean, I was out of the house by my freshman year of high school. Um, I mean, it seems like I haven't really lived at home in forever. Um, you know, I have, you know, two two younger brothers and, you know, every time I go home, they're just completely different and, you know, bigger and, you know, they're changing kind of, it's, uh, it's a weird feeling, you know, kind of being away from that and, you know, missing certain, certain things, whether it's, uh, you know, a family member passing or, you know, uh, just family in general. I mean, everyone, everyone's growing up, getting old. And, um, so it is, it's tough to kind of look at that from the outside. Um, but again, I mean, it's, it's all about, you know, staying in communication and, you know, your attitude about it. Cause, um, you know, if you, you can make it way harder on yourself by, you know, being, you know, all sad, but then not talking to, you know, the people that you need to talk to and, um, you know, maybe not reaching out to your mom or something like that every, you know, when you can, it definitely makes it harder. So I think just, you know, having that communication, um, you know, staying in touch, you know, I know my mom calls me a bunch and it's, it's more just like, Hey, I'm, I'm picking up if I'm not, you know, I'm, I got to call her back type of thing. So it's just, you know, little things like that, I think help. Being homesick is true regardless if you're 15 or if you're 29, no. right? Like it's, it's a real thing. And I think a lot of people when they go through struggles, and this is very common, is we think we're alone going through that. Um, and most, in most cases, we're not. There's a bunch of people in our surroundings that are going through the same thing. Um, can you guys talk to us a little bit more about this? Being professional athletes, 
about this idea of chasing perfection because you're always working on your craft, you're practicing, you're questioning yourself, how can I improve? Uh, can you just talk a little bit more about your relationship with perfection? For me, like like Kobe was saying before, like as as athletes or as professional athletes are always like striving to be the best and you're always like chasing that concept of being the best at your craft. So that's chasing perfection. And I think for a lot of us, that's what helps us to be great or to be good at what we do. It's because like we just have a burning desire to just want to be better, want to be better. But I think at some point chasing perfection is impossible. Like you, you can't be perfect at everything or anything. Like even the best people in the world, like they're not perfect. Like they make mistakes, whether it's in life, whether it's in their sport or whatever, they're going to make mistakes. So it's like, you need to chase perfection to an extent, but you also have to realize that perfection is unattainable. Like, um, so I think you have to find that balance of a little bit of both, like allow it to be that fire that drives you, but don't allow it to like consume you. Um, and I think as you grow older, you kind of understand how to manage that more. And I think as I was, when I was younger, it was harder to manage that, or you have a bad day or a bad game or a bad shift, and it can kind of control the outcome of your next shift or your next game because you let it bother you. But I think like, as I got older, it's understanding that what happened in the past, I can't control any of that. So it's like, just focus on the moment, focus on now, and then that'll allow me to be the most successful. Yeah. We had a conversation a while ago where we were talking about like, it's okay to chase perfection, but not to expect it because uh, you'll never get there. And our level of satisfaction in sport or in life has to do entirely with our expectations, right? If your expectations are way too high all the time, you're never satisfied. And I've, I found that with, especially with high level athletes, when you get into that trend, it can, it can slip away very fast. Like you can really get into a dark place because at some point we feed off things we do well. Um, so it's important to be satisfied once in a while. So can you, can you guys relate to that? Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, a lot of times kind of touching to that point is that like when we go to sleep at night, I'm sure most of us, like if we just played a game, we're probably replaying the bad plays more than the good ones. Just like, it's easier to like, uh, to have those ones repeat, or it's easier, I guess, to drop the positives than it wouldn't be to drop the negative. Sometimes that kind of like haunts you and it's it's not it's about I guess not getting too high not getting too low like when you make a good play sometimes I'm like I'm the best defenseman in the league you know <laughs> and then you make a bad play you're like what am I even doing here like you know it's about controlling that I guess and, and being able to drop both both sides of it like the really positive and the really negative but striving for perfection is great and I think I always want to prepare perfectly and have the perfect attitude have all the perfect things that I can control and then once you get out there, you just got to play and, and whatever happens you have to live with because you did everything right up until then. And then things happen. It's a, it's a quick game and you're not always going to make the right reads. It's like an instinctual game. So sometimes the play can change really quick and mm. sometimes you're the hammer, sometimes you're the nail. So it's about knowing that I at least find a lot of like satisfaction in knowing like I did everything I could leading up to this and, and now you have to let it unfold however it will. And if you keep doing that and keep preparing the right way over and over and over, um, the trend is going to be in the right direction, which is important, I guess, to zoom out and see uh, your trend is going the right way. Cool. To finish off, could you guys talk a little bit more about the importance of like coaches and parents have on your mental health in terms of the support they can offer and sometimes just a little something they can say that could be very helpful and sometimes a little something they could say that could be very hurtful. Um, so it could be something personal or, you know, something that uh, you've been exposed to, have heard about. Um, but just talk a little bit more about the the role that parents play and coaches play for uh, for professional athletes. Yeah, I mean, I'd say just example that jumps to my head is every game, no matter what I did, how I thought I did, and I'll get, you know, at least one text from my mom saying, you know, great game and, you know, whatever, you play great, like all this stuff. And I mean, some of the times I'm like, nah, like he was just saying that, whatever. But even of course, though, it's your mom. yeah, I know. But <laughs> I mean, like, even though, like, I know that, you know, she's, she's saying that cause I'm her son. She loves me. Like at the same time, it's just like, oh, like she actually does think that though. Like she thinks I was great. And it kind of puts it all into perspective for me a little bit. Like, uh, like who am I trying to really, 
like please or like you know it's if it's not myself you know like I have all my family and you know friends that are just so like thrilled and just like ecstatic that I'm even here you know playing hockey in the NHL like it's it just puts everything into a picture where it's like thinking of you know four-year-old me like if you told myself I was playing in the NHL like I'd be like yeah you're right but like now I'm actually doing it and you know it's 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 cool like it's it's something that you know you kind of have to look back on and so I think yeah just like those texts like it's it's good to just kind of put things in perspective and like you know I'm yeah I might not be great to you know whoever was watching but you know like back home you know I'm I'm great so helps yeah I think that's the same for me you get those texts sometimes and you probably had a terrible game it's like hey like at least you had a nice shot on that or yeah. something and you're like well I could have done a lot of things better but like they're they're your parents and they love you and it's just like they're they're proud of you every day and I think for me to get those texts from my parents or, or my buddies and stuff just knowing that they're at home watching knowing that they're at home supporting you just just means the world you know like you go through this every day you moved home at 16 like a lot of us did like uh, not seeing your family, not seeing your friends as much, and to know that they're just in your corner still, that they're, that they're there for you and they're supporting you regardless of the situation. It's not just, I mean, I'm sure everyone's phone get, you get more texts when you have a good game and it's like you did something good. Everyone's like, hey, like, nice goal. But like, when you have a bad game and you're still getting those texts from your boys, like, hey, like, good game, or your parents are like, hey, like, get them next time, you know? Just knowing that people are still there for you, I think means a lot. And from a coaching perspective, like, I think as a player that's, in and out of the lineup sometimes you like we've been saying you you get in that slump of not being on the same schedule as everyone you're you're down in the dumps a little bit and you're just not feeling like you're part of the team and sometimes it's hard just uh getting scratched the not knowing is hard so for, for a coach and marty's done this and and a few other coaches in my past just having an open line of communication where it's like hey like you're not in tonight like this might be why or just like even just a simple thing is like hey you're not going tonight like stay ready for the next game like you never know what's going to happen whatever just like some sort of communication so that you feel like a human being because there's times where if you're getting scratched and nobody talks to you for 10 games in a row or five games in a row you just feel like you're invisible maybe sometimes so just those little little details at five seconds to just say something I think goes a long way sometimes as a coach and I think that's something that I have a lot more respect for someone if they can at least just be open and honest with me and I I appreciate when coaches do that. And I think it, having external perspective like that allows you to s have a different lens on your situation. So if you had a few bad plays, like you were saying during the game, when instead of telling yourself after the game, when you're in your bed, like, oh, I suck tonight, it's more, no, I had a few bad plays and I also played very well for two periods or whatever it is. So mm. it just helps us to have a different perspective about the, about the situation. Uh, anything else you would want to add about uh, just this campaign or any messages that um, we didn't have the chance to, to share? I would just say, like, obviously we're hockey players. Um, we're so blessed to be able to do this for a living. Um, so I don't want to make it seem like, you know, we have it so hard because we have our problems. But um, although we're professional hockey players, we still have, you know, things that we deal with uh, in our day-to-day -day life. And, you know, the important part is that we're able to talk to one another. I know I feel confident having these conversations with these guys. Um, and, and we're really lucky to have friends and family who we can lean on. Um, so that'd be a message that, you know, I'd like to share. And um, I don't want to feel, I don't want to be like, oh, we're talking, you know, from our high horse um, or anything like that. Like we're just everyday people who happen to have like the coolest job in the world so um but but yeah like like i said we still have things that we got to deal with and and talking to people is probably i found the the best way to, to work through it i think there's no better way to to finish off and even with this quote that says it's okay not to be okay you know it's this realization that it is okay not to be okay and regardless if you're a pro athlete or if you have a you know a job downtown or if you're a student it doesn't matter what you do um, it's okay not to be okay. There's a lot of resources out there uh, for people who want to know more. There's resources on the internet. Uh, there's some on, on our website. Thank you for participating, for sharing your stories, uh, giving some advice and tips. Uh, much appreciated. And I know that a lot of people that are listening to this will take away some important messages. So thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks right. for hosting.